Hi, Dr. Patrick Gentempo here, back with you again. We are in the studio again. Even though the whole set has been broken down, we have more to give you, and we're really excited to bring this to you. So, enjoy. These people who come to seminary, you know, they've chosen a purpose in their life, and now they've come here to start training in that. Um, what kind of conversations happen you know, at, at that level, in those ranks, where you got people coming from you know, different parts of the world to come and study here? Um, you know, are there, uh, what kind of debates occur there between them, and what kind of things are discussed culturally? You know, what's so good about Veritas Seminary mm -hmm. is that the debates and the discussions are within a friendly environment. Yeah. So when you go out on the street or you are in a hostile environment or an academic setting, you can give an answer that lines up with Scripture. The debates we have in school are largely of secondary issues. You know, do the gifts exist today? Who are the 144,000? Uh, but there really is no debate when it comes to the essentials of the faith. Mm -hmm. You know, the deity of Christ, the, the Trinitarian nature of God, the virgin birth, the mm -hmm. second coming, the atonement, the bodily resurrection. Mm -hmm. All these things are staples to evangelical Christianity and to the Christian church at large for 2,000 years. So what we want to do now is learn how to communicate these things in an unbelieving world. Mm -hmm. We can use unbelievers' language, such as science, biology, archaeology, history, mm -hmm. uh, literature, classics, you name it, because they all point back to the truth of the Scriptures, which is just a fascinating thing when you dive in to make that study. You mentioned hostile environments. Uh, are there any that come to mind that you've gone into that you could share your experience walking into a hostile environment or dealing with a you know, adversarial situation? Well, there have been many times, especially just personally, where you're discussing Christianity or Christ with somebody, and obviously they're not a believer. In fact, there's one particular instance. I was at a retreat on the beach, and there were people from the beach that came around our bonfire and mm -hmm. were cooking some s'mores and were having a good time, and it just so happens that the Buddhist came and sat right next to me. Mm -hmm. And what we discussed was truth. And I asked him, I go, how do you know if something is true? What is your definition of truth? Mm -hmm. And he responded to me, well, truth is what you feel it is. Truth is a feeling. Truth is subjective. Truth is relative. It's up to the person. And I go, oh, is that the truth? That truth is relative and subjective and it's up to the person. He goes, yeah, it's totally subjective. I go, oh, is that the truth? And I repeated that about three or four more times and he finally got it mm -hmm. that it's impossible to deny truth because if you deny it, you affirm it in the very denial. Right. To say there is no truth purports to be a truth about truth. And so uh, it becomes a, a curious moment of awkwardness when you discuss this with a garden variety pagan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but truth is important, logic is important, and hopefully we've got our feet on the ground and, and our heart and our head in the sky again. Yeah, I, I had a similar experience where somebody saying, you can't be certain of anything. And I said, are you certain? Are you, you certain, certain that you anything? can't be certain? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. These radical views really mm -hmm. can't stand the test of scrutiny. In fact, you just turn the view on itself yeah. and you'll find uh, soon whether it can stand under its own weight. Yeah. That goes true for hard agnosticism, hard skepticism, hard relativism, and the like. So isn't it interesting that um, you know, some of the biggest, uh, I guess, attacks on Christianity, specifically religion in general, is uh, you know, these assertions of broad-based dogma, but you know, literally there's this, this intellectual, philosophical, and logical aspect to how you're drawing these conclusions, and there's and there's a history of evidence, et cetera, that supports, and maybe people try to you know find little pieces where we can dig, uh, you know, and, and get into that. But to try to paint a broad brush it would be erroneous to say that well, it's just everything is just blind faith. That would be a, a mistake mm -hmm. because it's not blind faith. There's a difference between taking a step of faith in the light of the evidence. Right and a leap of faith with your eyes closed in the dark. Right. The, la the former was Christianity, the latter is existentialism. Right. 
um, we're not existentialist in, in that negative way as that describes, but mm -hmm. we certainly want to think before we respond. We want to ponder and consider before we react. If we're not, we're committing unjustified thoughts and unjustified actions, which we want to stay away from. Well, that's a pretty amazing distinction, right? Because uh, you know, it's, it's faith, I guess, gets coupled with other words, right? So if you say that there's a step into it versus a leap, <laughs> that's, right. you know, that's, you know, that's required. And, and I think, you know, culturally, uh, you know, that, you know, non-Christians um, uh, or maybe even, you know, atheists, they, they would just assume or assert that, uh, you know, well, if you're a Christian, you've taken a leap of faith. You know, and had to cast reason out the window, but it seems like you know everything that you've been working on is is the opposite of that. That's exactly true. Um, the Lord said in the scriptures to worship God with all of your mind. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah, He tells us to come and let us reason together. Say it, the Lord. Mm -hmm. Christians were never asked to set their mind at the door before they went into the church. Mm -hmm. They were always asked to keep their mind fully engaged in what the Lord was teaching them. Uh, unfortunately, Christianity's got the bad rap that, oh, we have our head stuck in the sand mm -hmm. and we don't think about these things and we have no answer to the atheist and so forth, mm -hmm. but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, when you see the scholars in the church coming up through the centuries, you found that all of them were people who were vitally engaged in study, oftentimes academic study of these issues because they're important. We just can't get by with just saying, oh, it's what I believe. If you don't like it, don't worry about it. You know, now it's why do you believe what you believe? So in your view, given, you know, looking at the history and looking at the evidence that, that you've been describing, um, what do you see the impact of the inspiration for the people who step into faith? What do you see happens for them in their life on the inspiration side? Well, when they start to study these things, there is a whole epiphany that takes place because where has this information been? I never knew this. Mm -hmm. And it, what you're seeing is you see these lambs being turned into lions mm -hmm. because now they're equipped with the tools to be able to make a cogent, concise, and loving presentation that's based on the facts and not just your own subjective opinion. And I think it's caught the critics off guard in the last century because Christians went back to school, they defended the faith, they went and studied uh, science and theology and philosophy and literature and so in the languages mm -hmm. and came back with solid answers. And we wrested control of the argument from their hands and now they're back on their heels, especially from the artifacts that are coming out of the ground through archaeology at this point. You've obviously committed so much time, energy, effort to this life that you lead um, in multi dimensions. Whether you're digging up in the, in, you know, digging in the dirt, or you're you know, heading a seminary here, what do you want to see happen over the next twenty or thirty years in the world, and especially in the Christian world? I would like to see more Christians get serious about the deeper study of their faith. Mm -hmm. Once we do that, we can make inroads into our culture. Before, we could only get so far, almost preach to the choir. Mm -hmm. But if one is willing to dedicate their life to get equipped, to get educated, to go out and change a lost and searching world, to mix it up, if you will, with the critics and the objections to Christianity, that's, I think, the most important thing. We have to engage culture. In fact, the, the statistic today is only 2% of Christians share their faith. And when you ask them why they don't share their faith more, it's, I'm embarrassed. I don't know how to answer a question that they most likely will ask me. Um, I just don't know. I love the Lord, but I just don't know what to say. And that all goes away if you equip yourself. And that's what we try to do here at Veritas Seminary. We try to equip people. We try to get them to the point where they are confident in what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And they know not only what they believe, but why they believe it. It's a 
for this particular interview. Thanks for joining me. Really excited to take this ongoing journey with you as we keep bringing more content. If you haven't already, you really should subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of phenomenal content coming down the road into the future that you'll want to know about. Leave a comment down here. I think people would love to hear from you and then you can hear from them too. If you liked it, go ahead and give a like. It only takes half a second and share this with people that you care about. The world needs more light in it right now. So thanks for being with me. Hope to connect with you again soon. Thank you.